Now, let's talk about, well, latest trans stories, because there always is one, isn't there? Uh, first up, a female security guard who's been awarded £15,000 in damages after bosses ignored her pleas to install a lock on a unisex bathroom door. Joining me now to discuss that and another story as well, Kelly J. Keane, founder of Standing for Women, an all-round heroine of mine. Uh, good morning to you. Good morning to Good morning. you. Happy New now, Year. Happy New Year. Now, knowingly, we've, we've not got enough time, very much time for this, so we're going to race through this. But talk about this for security guards. It's Vanessa Abbas. She sued her employer, saying it was facing sex discrimination because she had to share um, unisex toilets, but it didn't have a lock on the door. This is just, like, really basic stuff, isn't it? It's absolutely insane, but I'm so delighted that she went for sex discrimination because all too often we've seen sort of the lesser crime of... Um, you know, different uh, employment tribunals trying to wrestle with what the actual issue is. And I think all the time for women, when men are allowed in our spaces, whether they are men that call themselves women or just plain yeah. old men, um, I think it is sex discrimination. I'm so delighted that, that she's she's actually gone down this route. Absolutely. And she was the only female security guard. They've got one ba basic bathroom and changing room for the, all the security guards. All the rest of them are men. And there's a loo there, but it hasn't got a lock on it. This is really basic stuff. The first time she asked, she should have gone, oh, yeah, sorry, we didn't think of that. Funnily enough, women don't want men in their toilets. I know it's a mad idea, and we don't care what the men are wearing, we don't want men in our toilets. It, this, is, this is a really good victory for, like, this, the unisex thing doesn't work for women. I don't think it works for most men either, by the way. No, I agree. I'd, I'll be very brief, but I went to a theatre show in Bristol and the toilets had been changed from male and female to unisex, both of, of them. They had. And actually, the sex is just split. So the men went to the men's, the old, what used to be the men's, and the women went to the women's, do except you, two regular blokes do you know what, who thought they'd skip the queue. You said, do you know what, we had that at the, the office Christmas party a couple of years ago. It was a place that was all unisex toilets, and all the women went, yeah, we're having the top one, F off. <laughs> and all the men were perfectly happy. They didn't want to share loose with us either because normal men don't want to do that, do they? Uh, let's also talk about um, women being represented at the UN. Um, at the UN, UN charity's appointment of a transgender model um, uh, has, uh, has been somewhat controversial. This is trans model Monroe Bergdorf, who is a biological male... Looks fabulous. I, I, I have met Munro. Looks fabulous as a woman, but not a woman, a biological male. That is a matter of fact. Um, but has been chosen extraordinarily um, uh, as the uh, the, U the first UK champion for UN Women UK. Um, I mm. mean, there are what? I mean, 30, 40 million women in this country. We couldn't find a single real woman to represent us. I'm, I'm going to be controversial here and say I'm outraged that they didn't pick someone like Munro before because the UN women is absolutely full to the brim with men calling themselves women. I, I don't even know what the organisation's for. I, I, I think it should be uh, defunded and should no longer exist. I think it's a, a big joke. And I think Munro is just the icing on the the very fetishy cake uh, that it seems to represent. I, I agree with you. I mean, I'm, I'm just as offended by the idea that someone who's just a, a model... And, I mean... I, I, the idea that a model should be representing women in the UK, um, you know, fake everything. I mean, could we have a woman who's achieved something, a scientist, uh, uh, you know, an author, uh, um, a doctor, a, a someone who actually has run a, set up a business and employed people, as opposed to someone prancing down a runway with fake boobs on? I mean, whether they were actually a biological male or a female, they're still not representative of women in this country and, and of no ability. I don't know what Myrna of Bergdorf can do to represent me or any other woman in this country. No, I... It's um, it's a real shame. Look, I I look at Monroe and I think that that's an unrecognisable person. Um, you know, he's had so much work done, and I just can't imagine any woman being taken that seriously who'd had so much plastic surgery. So the the whole thing is is a mockery. Um, but I do think I do think he's quite fitting to represent the UN women um, for this country. And so I hope it just piques more people and and they see that. Actually, the UN women doesn't doesn't yeah. represent our interests at all. No, it did. Oh, by the way, Ofcom will be unhappy that uh, you've used the word he about a biological male, but Monroe Bergdorf may have fake everything and and look like a very beautiful woman, but nevertheless is a biological male, and he is the correct pronoun for a biological male. 
Well, of course. Uh, it, I, I, I hope that I haven't got you into any trouble, Julia. Oh, I don't care I if you feel have. That you have the <laughs> shoulders Darling, you and to I, manage. You and I will, will crowdfund the fines. I really don't care anymore. <laughs> oh, we deal in facts on this show, and facts is facts. Always such a pleasure. Uh, Kelly J. Keane, founder of Standing for Women. Uh, very, very, very quick word to Philip Ingram on this. Do you think it's interesting whether this was actually a biological man or woman to choose a model to represent women in the UN? I mean, sod off. You, you need a woman representing women in, in the same way that if you've got a, a, a black movement, you need you need someone of, of colour to to represent um, uh, minorities that are out there. Because if it was someone from a uh, your white background did that, yeah. then I, I, I just don't know why we women aren't represented by anyone who's representing us in Europe. But there we are.